let's have a look at the Plexter M6S, the new six gigabit per second SATA drive that's mainstream and from Plexter. This review is not gonna be particularly exotic. This isn't the new M.2 or SATA Express or anything like that. This is a plain Jane vanilla SATA SSD drive. Now it is SATA 6, so, or SATA 3, 6 gigabit per second, however you wanna say that, whatever. Um, this is a mainstream product, and this is aimed at a middle of the road, sort of every man SSD. It's low profile, so it's designed to fit in a notebook, and you know you can use it in a desktop. So it's seven millimeters tall, and it's also relatively low powered. Maximum power dissipation is a quarter of a watt, so very low. That's lower than a notebook mechanical drive even. Um, it's designed for cost conscientious users, with its aggressive price point, but it holds onto the market in terms of its value. So especially the price to performance ratios, but we'll look at that in the benchmarks. So what do you really need to know about this product? Well, it really is all down to the benchmarks, isn't it? This is another flash drive from Plexter that relies on Toshiba's toggle NAND flash chips. That's the 19 nanometer process. And it has a Marvell controller. But before we get into the benchmarks, I do want to say that doing some real world testing with this in my Asus UX32 V notebook it felt snappy and was generally awesome now i had an ssd in there from before but it was sort of a first generation ssd and i actually felt like the laptop was noticeably faster and the the battery life i think was slightly improved i, I did a sort of a rundown test and it lasted about 20 minutes longer than with the other ssd the other thing is this ssd didn't heat up during tests uh, nearly as much as, as the other one that I had in my UX32 VD. So I thought that was kind of surprising. Hey, if it doesn't go to heat, that uh, means the battery lasts longer, right? So the benchmarks. Now there's a full set of these benchmarks over on techsyndicate.com. So if you don't want to listen to me blather on about them, you can just stop now and go to techsyndicate.com and look at the benchmark results for yourself there. It's sort of in a nice slide format. It's a lot easier than listening to me, I think. Now, our test rig was an Asus Z97WS with the Intel, you know, the Devil's Canyon Haswell Refresh 4790K, and it was not overclocked. And this is the 256 gigabyte model. Now, the specs on this drive are advertised at up to 520 megabytes per second read and about 440 megabytes per second write. Now, we got a, a little less than that consistently, and we hit between 490 and 516 megabytes per second for reads, and on the uh, writes it was uh, closer to you know 410 420 and that was on the 32 kilobyte to 8 megabyte in size uh, IO operation of course the drive does better in larger read write tests but um, that's those numbers are not too far off that that I can crawl uh, call foul now I will say that the Marvell controller in this that's an 88 SS 9188 that's a dual core controller and that has improved the number of IOPS per second that this drive can have. Flexter advertises between 80,000 and 94,000 IOs per second on random reads. And we were certainly seeing that in HD Tune Pro and we got about 87,000 IOPS. Now that's for 4K reads. Now the controller really did a good job servicing many random reads in parallel in order to get the IOPS that high. If you notice on that benchmark for a single IOPS, it's much lower, it's like 20,000. So that means that this controller is servicing four and five reads in parallel, which is a good job for a dual core controller. That really means that Plexter has got the firmware on this right. Now there were a few tests where we were actually getting 450 megabytes per second writes. And that's a little better than they advertised. And that was probably because the stuff that we were writing to the drive was slightly compressible. Although the benchmark tools that we're running uh, tend to do a pretty good job about saying, oh, this is compressible or this is not compressible when they're running the benchmarks. That's the, really the best explanation that I have for that. It's possible that it's faster, but the numbers that they give you for this drive are not unreasonable, unlike some of the other drives that we've tested. Actually, you know, we were really impressed with this unit because it seems that Plexter is keenly aware of the market competition and what other vendors are up to because our tests uh, met or exceeded the benchmark numbers that I've gotten from other drives at this price point. Now, you know, Samsung is super aggressive and Samsung goes crazy with a lot of their stuff. And, you know, Samsung does uh, the uh, NAND flash fabrication and uh, the circuit board assembly and the, the whole nine yards. And so uh, Samsung has really built a crazy market for itself. And I was surprised that this little guy 
holds his own and Plexter actually stands a shot at carving out some of the mainstream market from Samsung. Now, have you been able to get a more performant SSD than Samsung forever? Yeah, sure, it's it's not a problem. That's not the market that Samsung after, is after. Samsung wants to sell a huge number of mainstream drives. And this is really the first drive that I've seen that actually stands a chance of, of doing that in terms of the price point and the components that went into it and the cost benefit ratio. This really nails it. Now, we tested the 256 gigabyte unit. There's also a 128 gigabyte unit that is a little slower. I would really recommend if you can just stick with the 256 gig unit. It's going to be faster. It's got more cash. It's generally a better drive. The 512 gig unit also has a larger DRAM cache. So keep that in mind that you're going to get more on drive DRAM cache if you get the larger drive. And with the 19 nanometer toggle flash from Toshiba, they've really built a solid product around that that shows off uh, Toshiba's flash uh, production capabilities. And I think for us as consumers, this is maybe the first salvo in the coming SSD wars or something. I'm just making that up now. But SSDs uh, should drop dramatically in price and the capacity should go way up. And so now we've got at least two major players that are able to deliver in terms of reliability, production capacity, and features at a price point. So I think this is a really exciting time. Oh, one last thing. This thing does have a three-year warranty in case you were wondering.